Namaskaram. My name is Louise, and yes. um, the process of working on oneself and developing oneself, it takes not weeks, but months and years. And when you do start to find that contentment and self-realization, you one then has to return to a physical place in which they were prior to that self-realization and finding that security. My question is how does one hold on to those new feelings and not resort back to who they were once prior to that? The process of self-realization as is spoken about over here is actually a process of firstly accepting that there is a soul or at least acknowledging it as a possibility. Then, realizing that you have to discern between actions that are propelled by the ego and actions that are impulsed by the soul, which is a yes or a no, you know, you can find out this is the thing to do, yes or no, by consulting with the soul, not thinking what you think you know. So the more you grow into that surrender, it is not an attainment, it's not like, aha, now I'm enlightened, or aha, now I'm separated from everything, I am not any of this. It's a growing and deepening process and sometimes the ego pushes you into action, then you, in that sense, fall back then you pick yourself up and you say, no, I'm experiencing a lot of suffering, so this must be an action of the ego. Let me go back, let me tune in, and then again you move from that, and then there is joy that appears, so you know, aha, this is indeed arising from the truth. So it is a process of deepening that, that engagement and that connect with the truth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you fall out of it, then you go back into it, then you fall out of it. So there's no heavy fall down like happens if you start to detach from everything and say, I'm not this suffering, I'm not this and not that. And then at one point, you're in such an exalted state, you're like on the moon, you know, with a moon suit. And then suddenly, the capsule has to crash because of this reason or another. There's no fuel or there's no whatever those reasons could be. And then suddenly you're back here and you have to deal with this in a much, much more demanding way than if you're already in a thisness state of discernment. So it's not about, oh, how do I hold on to this state? It is rather, how do I deepen into this? Ah, okay, I'm here. I haven't fallen from anywhere. Two actions arose from the ego, there was a bit of suffering. All right, let me just tune in again and move with the truth again. It's very, it's a doable, very much here thing. It's not like you're somewhere and then suddenly you fall. It's more like, ah, okay, let me just move into truth again. So it's about discerning what comes natural and instinctive and seeing where your, where your thoughts and actions are pushed through from the ego. Yes, and I wouldn't call it what is natural and instinctive because what we, what we very often think is natural is actually the ego covering itself up, you know, to like put, primal. Yeah, primal can often be primal ego, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it may appear to be very primal and very actually natural to the system, but to what is it natural? Mm -hmm. Is it natural to the truth? or is it natural to the ego? Mm -hmm. That is where we have to be discerning and we use the viveka buddhi, the, the, the intelligence of discernment. Mm -hmm. We are here and we are quiet and we are surrendered and we are saying, okay. And sometimes, you know, you're not strong enough to follow the truth, okay. I mean, you move on, you do it the next time. There's no guilt, I'll go to hell now and fry there in hot oil or whatever. <laughs> whatever they do to whichever hell you are connected to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the great thing is there is no hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. The hell is just that suffering that comes when you go with the ego, that is... And what is that ego? You know, where does this ego come from? It's not that you were born with it. It is society that has 
imposed its conditioning and slapped it on you as you grew up so that you bend to society's will that you're subjugated and oppressed and suppressed by that will of society behind which is what? It is just greedy, greedy capital trying to multiply itself and create desires. So a person who grew up in the Amazon will perforce have less ego than one who grew up in London because they are exposed to that much more of all that greed. Yeah, I think that's one of the challenging things is returning to the physical environment where the ego is put at the forefront and really trying to break it down and separate it <coughs> and focus on within the internal and not allow the external to be the driving force. It's not actually even about internal and external because the ego is also internal, it's in your thinking. So, you know, you're, you're young, I mean, you can live a life of much more joy if you just take a moment in a day just to feel your soul, you know, the master of your being. This is what was your guiding force when you were a little child, you know. And, and it, has, it has been rudely just slapped over and literally obscured from your experience by exactly that society which claims to support you and, and, and give, you, give you that entire space to grow in. It's not true. As you tune into the soul, you, you support society truly that way. Because a person who lives from that truth will never ever harm society, it's not possible. And yet you will not allow yourself to be harmed by that collective ego that has that has actually imposed fear on you, controls you through fear, controls you through, through aspirations which are, which are not at all something needed by this system, you know. And I'm not saying we can defeat it all and that's not the idea. The idea is just moment to moment without too much ambition just to try to feel the soul and move into surrender and remember, remember, remember the master, remember that the Antar Guru, the one that is your guiding entity, you know, bend down to that as much as possible.